Hi everyone, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, I'm Emily, uh, one of two Emilies at Rhythm Section, as we were just discussing before everyone came in. Um, I look after the Patreon community um, for Rhythm Section, um, which is a pretty active community, um, people who are sort of uh, supporting the label and also receiving some benefits. Uh, we run workshops and masterclasses like this, um, and also offer a range of like other things like band camp discounts, uh, stickers, early access to mixes, uh, mentoring, a whole bunch of different things. Uh, so this is part of that program, but it's open to anyone, um, which is really exciting. Um, so today we are joined by Cousin Kula, who I'm going to spotlight so everyone can see you. There we We've go. We've cave on here. <laughs> there they are um which is really exciting um their album double dinners came out on rhythm section at the end of last year so we thought we'd uh put this uh session in uh, for them to chat a bit more about about the story behind it i guess and how it all came together um so they're going to be chatting about their approach to uh recording and songwriting at home and just generally how they make music together, which I'm really excited to hear. Um, so we have with us Elliot, Jordan, Doug, and William. Yeah, no Joe today, unfortunately. No. <laughs> he runs a jam night in um, in the centre of Bristol, um, so he's there jamming. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's a good excuse. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, we we're, they're going to chat for a bit about a few different things we've got a Q&A at the end so if you've got some questions uh hold on to them and we'll do that at the end um I don't think there's much more to say really I guess I'll uh hand over to you guys thanks very much cool thanks Emily hello everyone um yeah I'm Elliot this is Doug this is Jordan this is Will we're gonna talk yeah a bit like Emily said about our album and some some approaches that we have to songwriting that help us uh, and things that we like doing um, and we're gonna go through well we're gonna go into one of our projects Doug mixed the album so we have the pleasure of having the project right here on this computer so <laughs> um, yeah well should we start should we start with the yeah start with the yeah pro I always think it's interesting like the the something from nothing bit like that where the ideas come from yeah we've had this discussion before like where does a song even come from it's sometimes hard to um to know because they just come out of nowhere sometimes like you could be walking down the street and get a melody and just be like hmm like yeah you need to capture that and just like record it on your phone or yeah i don't know it just so we've got like a list of things here about our approach that are, are like conversational pointers um one thing that we love doing is just noodling so like just having a go on your instrument and just messing around until something sort of sits right um yeah and and often and actually that's the interesting thing about being in a band actually is that you could be noodling or i could be new you know doing something we're all there technical term <laughs> and you don't notice you know you just think you're you're playing nothing and then Jordan out of nowhere is like hey what what's that that yeah. sounds you know you come back and you made a cup of tea you come back in what's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? just like nothing but no but but then it's you know you get that perspective that it there could be a or well yeah moment. like Will was often playing something I'm like well play that again like because mm. to me I heard something that's like a hook mm. I'm like and I'm like no what you just played like, I don't know what I just played I'm like no the thing you just played play it again <laughs> <laughs> well that's bouncing Bill wasn't it oh, yeah. I mean I know we're going to talk about now that you're gone yeah. but bouncing Bill was just like a <clears throat> snippet of nothing on the tagged on the end of something else wasn't it well I bought a Casio from an old woman off Gumtree <laughs> got it in a loft the Bill was just messing around with one of the yeah settings. just put the really <laughs> like old school disco beat like cheesy like Casio <laughs> disco beat on it was just like playing something, not even thinking about it, just playing something to that, and then recorded it. Didn't didn't think any more about it until then. You go through like old recordings that we've just got stored, mm. and then you go, "Hey, like this is actually such a vibe." Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, That's our tune, bouncing Bill. If you want to listen to that, it's, uh, there's like a, a rough version of that 
on Spotify. But that that leads into the point of like that we have, which is record everything. Yeah, like, absolutely everything. So like everything we do in any rehearsal, we just record it like pretty much ninety percent. Anything that we think's like even slightly worthy of something, we just have a little Zoom dictaphone and we just like hit record. And it sounds great for what it is. It picks up the room. So like any idea we have, we record it and it goes onto like a shared folder that we all have access to. Which that. can be really like invaluable when when also like refining parts and later on when you've kind of got the, the arrangement or a structure for a tune because we can all kind of in our own time put it into like you know into logic or something and put it onto a loop and then try and write parts over over the top of it rather than doing it in the in the in the room at the same time all together because yeah. sometimes everyone like five people all trying to write parts at the same time can mm. they can kind Get of a bit chaotic. play over it. Yeah, chaotic. But then even on those on those parts when we've been playing, say it's like a we've you know like just looped a section as a band for like 15 minutes, like yeah. trying to get like a verse groove. And you remember that halfway through there was like a moment of magic and you kind of go back two weeks later and you're like, yeah, there it was. Like that's we have what, this what saying, it should be. We have this saying because we've been doing these recordings, just like rehearsal recordings for like, I don't know, like six, seven years, it's maybe like 200. Gigabyte. So we call it mining because the folder is just full of so much shit now they're like if we've, if we've got no ideas we're like should we just go mining in the, in the google drive and just like rummaging around it's like oh what's this this is cool like, yeah <laughs> um completely forgotten that, 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 that's the thing that even like existed or these this... sections from multiple different potential songs yeah go, hang on actually that fits really well with this yeah and then we'll tag that onto that so. we had this one idea that we were just trying to turn into a tune for years and every time we did it birthed something else we were like <laughs> so this one thing was just like giving birth to like five other songs basically but we still haven't used the actual yeah. thing. <laughs> um, i'll have it stay yeah <laughs> or maybe we'll just keep on using it to write other songs <laughs> <laughs> um one other thing i've got another note is just like not like in terms of writing melodies and especially singing like don't be scared to just like ad lib any old shit like before you have lyrics because like often finding the melody can like inform the lyrics and if you're just just riffing like i used to be feel self-conscious if i didn't have lyrics to like know what to sing but now i just just sing anything it doesn't really matter at that stage in the game i don't think um i remember hearing a song exploder with the 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 guy from unknown mortal orchestra and he's his theory was that every every like piece of music has like the perfect melody that can fit with it i don't necessarily think that's true i think there's multiple melodies that are going to work but but i think you by just like riffing and just working things out eventually something just locks into place um and it doesn't have to be perfect at the start but eventually something will happen um yeah i think we do a lot of that noodling basically just like messing around until it's like oh this sounds mm. cool now like it can just be a mess and eventually just come together um, you it's just kind of like you trust get, the process. It's almost like you kind of get like a eureka moment, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, what else? Hooks. We're a sucker for the hooks. Just like anything that's catchy or is an earworm, mm. it's just like, let's just like do that. That sounds mm. good. I like the things that stick in your head or like, yeah, like Will will play something. I'll be like, play that again. That's such a sick hook, you know? Mm. Um, and we love just like, like getting the hooks in our tunes um yeah there's not yeah. much more to say about that well <laughs> yeah and <laughs> always removing it, things that aren't hooked yeah, yeah that's true like, yeah because often we've got five five of us all trying to write the hook at the same time we're like whoa 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 what like we need to thin this out here like, fighting for the hook. <laughs> <laughs> um so like just focusing on what the the what you want that moment in the music to say and then like not letting everything else just like clear the way a bit because often like we've we used to write i think we used to write music that was a bit more messy and like with this album we were like really just like let's just let the songs breathe and let the hooks come through and let there be space um which i mm. think was a really worthwhile like thing to learn for us anyway um and it's obviously depending on the type of music that you're writing but we just wanted the hook the hooky moments to really come through so people can sing along to those bits. Um, 
what, what else have we got? Um, just because you're sad doesn't mean you need to write sad songs in minor <laughs> keys. <laughs> but often, like, you know, like, after a breakup, you want to write all these sad songs, but it doesn't have to be that way, I don't think. Like, you can, like, Doug will write some chords that don't give me the feeling of, you know, like a minor song of sadness. Or I, I think, like, juxtap juxtaposition of lyrical content against, like, more upbeat music can can like produce some really interesting results um yeah and we've done that a lot i think i've done that a lot um and then one thing with our album was like we decided in lockdown like what these songs had sort of formed and we we're like well maybe we can continue this theme and make the album all you know all feel this way like this psych soul vibe so like having this overarching theme that we like adhered to was really helpful in the creative process because it's kind of like the first time we've done that in like in any of kind of our body of work yeah um, yeah it was curious like right you know because we had a few tunes it's like okay we could potentially have a psych soul um vibe for the record and then for all the unfinished things you then like, kind of look at them through that lens, don't you? And it's like, exactly. would this work? Like, as it is, as it needs editing. And it, I felt, I felt like it definitely made us like write, write, write music in, in a different way. But having like having a kind of goal, um, or it like just, you said, like an overarching theme to work towards. Yeah, it's just some subtle restriction. Like mm, that's not going to work within this family of songs. So maybe we'll save that for another like later date. And that just helped to inform like the whole record basically mm. because it, it all had a tone um that came across i think that um was intended from this from very early on throughout the whole process and then in production we knew we wanted to give it that sort of kind of 70s charm like of being a bit rough around the edges um so we were conscious of that when we recorded that's why we recorded it most of it live just in our house and mm. uh, i think in that in that in that sense as well because we've we've always had in our music we've always had like uh through like vocals three part harmonies has always kind of been the essence but we it's always been very instrumentally heavy as well mm. um in, in like post-production and for this body of work it was there's lots more space where the vocals really breathe mm. Mm. yeah they're more song-like um so yeah i guess to to illustrate some of these points we were looking at we were going to go through now that you're gone which is one of the songs off the record uh i don't know if you heard it <laughs> but there's uh yeah we've got a video and um uh bradley zero makes a cameo so you can check that out <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah Glitter bed, glitter bed. No, yeah, he, he gave himself one. Oh, right. Yeah, <laughs> he wanted that moment. Um, yeah, so we're just going to take it through uh, from the very start of it all the way through to the finished record. Um, yeah, and I've mined those bits out of the drive, like we were saying, so you can um, see how it evolved. So yeah, it kind of came from you, really, didn't it? Al? Yeah. I remembered yesterday actually how it formed i was chatting to a girl in lockdown and she sent me like something <laughs> of her playing guitar so i think i was like wanting to show off a bit and i was like why don't you why don't you try this and then i tried it i was like actually this is really cool and then, <laughs> <laughs> so then i just decided to keep it myself and that became now that you're gone oh. so did you send it to her? no no <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna listen to the record like Hey, <laughs> no, it's it's nothing like her song, but um, but yeah, my, I'm just confessing that it's the whole set <laughs> yeah. <is> stolen. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's how it started. But it, but it was it, like right in the middle of lockdown. So, us three who lived together could play music, but Bill and Joe can, couldn't come round, and uh, me and Bill were working on quite a lot of the songs. So we. would we ended up downloading this um, software called Audio Movers, which completely changed like how we were able to function in lockdown. Because mm. we, me and Bill could both be streaming full quality audio to each other. 
um, and do songwriting. I mean, we couldn't play together. There was still a bit of latency, but it was enough that we I could play something to him and he could be like, okay, cool, and play it back to me. And we both had microphones so we could talk. So we, we'd just like have songwriting sec- sessions, just like sat at home in our separate bedrooms and um, developed the song and basically demoed it out remotely and then played it to these guys. And then eventually Bill was able to come around and sit on the other side of my window. <laughs> yeah. I, I, got was, I had a bedroom on the ground floor. The, um, the and um, we just fleshed it out there. even more like through the window <laughs> of my room. <laughs> I'd like give Will a mic through the window and stuff. And, um, power and he'd set up his keys like literally like on the mud. <laughs> um yeah there is a picture of it there we go oh yeah we built a climbing wall as well that's a separate story, <laughs> that's a separate story. <laughs> here's bill <laughs> outside um what's the, there's another one bill balcony two what's that oh yeah <laughs> Lucy in the sky with diamonds there as well. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's that's like April. That's April 2020, really, isn't it? Yeah. Um. Yeah. So the first we've got those. So before you got together, we've got those audio clips, which is like the first kind of nuggets of now that you're gone. Um. And maybe Emily can tell me, hopefully you can hear this, but this is the, the first. Or 20 long as well, classic. This is what I would have just recorded and sent to you, and then you'd be using the guitar on it. But this is balcony jams, I think. Uh, I, I labelled this, yes. I'd never heard this through oh, yesterday. No. I'd only, I, it was two months later no, that I, I ever heard it. This is from over audio movers, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it is. But this is just me rather than. Yeah, this is just Bill. Bill. But you, from what I played you of the tune. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. That's just Keith and, and synth bass. Um, but you'd also demoed some um, some vocal melodies as well, mm. <laughs> which is fun. I don't know where you're recording this. I can hear. Sounds like you're down. <laughs> No problem, so the most basic <laughs> remake. Is this the version of you going really church at the end? Is that this oh, tune? No, that's, no, that's um, <laughs> I'll say that for the next song. Yeah, <laughs> so there's nuggets starting to emerge. So that's like the first, the first time that hook emerged, isn't it? April. Yeah, Bill did not write that hook though. (laughs) (laughs) That's my hook. (laughs) (laughs) Um, The first time I heard it though was two months later. I remember because you were like, I've got this. I I know you two have been downstairs. So at the time we weren't living in this house, we were living elsewhere that was in the woods. Uh, You could sort of see Will out there, the window (laughs) under the climbing wall thing. so they were sort of downstairs and I was two stories up doing other bits. Um, but then we met in the middle and now you're like, oh, yeah, I've got this song. I, I'm quite pleased I recorded it because now a year and a half later, I can play it on Zoom. Um, but yeah, this is the first <laughs> time I heard it in the lounge. <laughs> Another day to go and blow away. 
Oh, 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 Yeah, yeah. Right. So at that point, like the kind of meat and potatoes is there, isn't it? The song like, is there. Yeah. But that was kind of the premise. Like for this album, unlike previous work, we kind of fleshed out a lot of the songs, like the skeletons of them, before like making them band arrangements. Whereas previously, we've just like had a little nugget of an idea and just thrown that into the band pit and made something from it. So that's why there's a lot more like so more kind of songy songs um, on this record. But that was, you know, it was an enjoyable process and sort of reflective of lockdown and slowing down and just being able to, you know, write songs on guitar and by yourself. Um, yeah, funny story, actually. I used this song for a job interview I had where I had to do like an acapella vocal thing. And the pre-chorus where I go really high um, I was obviously really nervous and I just couldn't do it. <laughs> totally fucked it up. But, um, got the job anyway. But um, yeah, every time I hear that now, I think of that because it's some PTSD. <laughs> um, yeah, what else have we got? And first band version. Yeah. No guitar solo. <laughs> it does have guitar solo. Does it? Oh, in this, in this version. Just give it forward a bit. Hmm. So this is just one of those um, Zoom dictaphone recordings in our rehearsal, of which we have millions. It's suddenly 3D, isn't it? Yeah. Right? So this is the this is the earliest recording. I don't think it's the first time we played it, but it's the earliest recording we've got of us all playing it together. That bit as well. Yeah, so people start to add, like, you know, to dress it up a little bit. Um, and then, as soon as you got the drums involved, you start to sort of pick up little bits where, like, you change sections and you kind of accents. start to add all the little accents and yeah. things like that, and, and things that you do as a band that you can't really do without yeah. everyone there, sort of thing. Yeah. Mm. I mean, also between um that the you know the acoustic guitar one and this one there's been two months of when well, quite a lot's happened actually because like we'd released that uh some lockdown videos and you know Bradley had seen them and we'd started to have conversations with ribbon section yeah and at, and at this point i think probably at the start of september we're just kind of agreed it's like okay yeah we're going to do this album it's going to sound like this psych soul thing so it's like okay yeah time to pull a finger out and actually finish the music <laughs> on that point actually like that was definitely like a lesson that that we learned as a band through like lockdown happened we we're like well what the fuck are we gonna do so so we we're like well let's just make these let's just record our tunes in lockdown and put them on instagram and make these videos did did um oh sorry <laughs> did a um like an ep of this stuff and then was like well what let's just release it on spotify you know we wanted to stay busy to keep you know like people engaged with our music and and then just through that having a bit of discipline of like making sure we were doing stuff um that's how this whole rhythm section thing came about um so i think that's just like really proved to us that like just staying on it and being active is you know it definitely pays off um because then like bradley randomly picked up on it and got in touch with us and was like have you got any more of this shit like yeah yeah, yeah. and now we're on patreon lives <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this is the big gig <laughs> um do you want to go into the project yeah 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 so well, I mean, the next step was recording. So that was September. 
And then we worked on it for a couple more months. And the record was recorded in sort of two two day sessions, either side of, of Christmas 2020. So one, we recorded this one in December, and then we recorded the other half in, I think, February or the start of March. Um, yeah, and then it came out in this December 2021, just past. Um, yeah, recording it. Recording was interesting because we've always, I think some bands kind of, not like write their music in the studio, but assemble the tune in its recorded version first and then decide their band arrangement later. But because we've always been so rehearsal heavy, I was thinking about this today, we've always been so rehearsal heavy that um, we're just, you know, we're so used to performing it together that to try and split that up into like a, a multi-track kind of record the drums first, record the bass and so on. It's, I don't know, we, we find it quite unusual. So on this one, we had made a conscious decision. It's like, we're gonna, we're, whatever, however we end up recording it, we're gonna record it together. It's gonna be band takes. Yeah. It's like, you know, you need that element of relying on each other to like, all right, this is the take, like, yeah, let's yeah. go. And then, and then that seems to be how you, because capture some performance magic, isn't it? Into yeah. the, otherwise it's sterile. Yeah, just that you, through like recording your, parts separately which is what we've done previously something gets lost along the way when you're just being a perfectionist and getting it so perfect and you're playing to everyone else who's played separately and and eventually it's just something's missing at the end of just like that feeling of playing together so we were like so conscious like Doug said of avoiding that so let's just play together as a band and everyone is relying on each other to play well and you're not just thinking, oh, I'm just going to overdub it later, so it doesn't fucking matter. I think it's <laughs> like, I think it's like capturing, like capturing like humanity in the music as well. And like, um, it's like a good uh, podcast we were listening to in the van once. I think with like Trent Reznor, where he talks about, oh, yeah. you know, uh, where the like slight imperfections in music, which kind of make it much more like organic and and human. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And that was like an interesting thing to think about when we were when we were recording. Well, yeah, I mean, you've got an opportunity now with like, you know, with compute, you know, we can do a million takes. We're recording at home. There's no time pressure. If you wanted to, uh, you know, we could like melodyne the like vocals like into oblivion, you like everything, yeah. just like time align it. But it's, it just sounds know. like surgical and, and kind of robotic. And yeah, you want it. Yeah. And like the, the, the record was a soul record and we knew that. So like we wanted it to be reminiscent of, you know, records from the 70s um so it just felt like the right thing to do basically um yeah so we did doug had been like already experimenting with like various recording techniques and um had got into like ribbon microphones um which give like a real like nostalgic charm about things anyway and he started building some which was cool and then he built this thing that we call the cloud, which is like <laughs> I um, got a picture of the cloud. <laughs> this is this is us trying to put the studio in sort of home studio, I guess. Make the cloud. Uh, okay. Nope, can't see it then. Ah, oh, there it is. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> so, so this is how to, this is how to turn your rented house into a um. Not, um oh, oh, can't see the screen. Sorry. Hmm. Here it is. This is how to turn <laughs> your rented house into a um fully uh. <laughs> fully yeah. insulated room you get a knock on your bedroom door in the morning and doug's like want to help me assemble the cloud <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's it's just like a floating it, it's a it's a floating ceiling basically supported on our pa stands um with the ribs and then those are just like acoustic foam sound insulation panels that we already had hanging on the wall but you know attaching stuff to the roof is a bit more serious but we knew for this record we wanted some bits uh of the recording to be really 
some bits wet, but some bits needed to be really dry, particularly on the on the drum caption. Doing that in houses can be tough because you're in kind of these box rooms and you know there's all the kind of like springy clicks. So filling this room with um with soft the, stuff. Yeah, the panels on the wall and insulation, the cloud kind of helped a bit. So under the cloud is um is the drum kit basically. And the fairy lights. This is our our rehearsal room as it happens. So we see a lot of this room. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny kind of looking at it actually and it's, yeah so half of we recorded the record half of it's in here and half sort of on the other side of the house um you know away from the drums and actually kind of slightly as a covid thing because we were still this was still sort of mid lockdown wasn't yeah, it a lot of it was recorded with masks on yeah <laughs> Yeah. So we put Joe and um and Will, who don't live here, so they were always kind of on that side of the house in this room in the drum and and, uh, and keyboards thing, and us who were on the other side. Yeah. It's kind of in retrospect kind of mad. But yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. quite mad like thinking about that. It's like thinking back to that time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just seeing pictures of, of us stood around and like you know, and you guys are just like wearing masks all the mm. time. I mean, you'd need to have isolation anyway. Um, but then there was the COVID isolation aspect. So mm. it's like, yeah. So yeah, doing it this way basically meant that we'd set up the house and then we had, you know, kind of long cable snakes and stuff. So three of us were recording in one room. We had the guitar amps in another bedroom, kind of down the corridor. Um, <laughs> the drums, uh, uh, in this room with the cloud, Will was in there because he was playing bass, the synth bass on most of the record for their kind of eye to eye interaction. But then we could all hear on the headphones and then, yeah, into the computer. But so we could shut the doors in the house. All the cables have to go out the front <laughs> windows of the house. So the house just looks mad. It's just got all these cables just going out the windows into <laughs> other windows. And like, so anyone that drives past the house is you know, like, with lighting on the house, like shoved into the windows. Yeah. Stuff, like, sound the game. XLR snakes go out the letterbox and then <laughs> left, <laughs> left and right <laughs> into the rooms. Yeah. Yeah. And then just weird noises coming out of the house <laughs> i mean it works yeah it works we're lucky to live we live a bit out of bristol like um into the countryside for exactly this reason so that we can do shit like this um here he is this is um this, this is joe who isn't here today <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that synth on the top uh i think yeah, that's all the bass on the record, isn't it? From that Roland SH9. That synth, I used to work in a restaurant as a chef and that was just in the office at one point. And I asked my boss like, whose synth is that? And he's like, oh, it's mine, it doesn't work. And I was like, oh, do you reckon I could have, have a go on it? Maybe take it home. And he was like, yeah, do what you want. So I took it home. Will, what, do you want to explain what you did? It was, a, I just opened it up and it, essentially there was just, um, kind of like a, a grounding strip that had come sort of unstuck. It was kind of a sort of a, a paper sort of sort of grounding strip that had come unstuck and it was touching some of the underside of, an, of another of the other circuit board. So literally the fix was electrical tape, just taped this um, tape this piece of like paper down basically in and that was it. And then Is that tape still in it? Still there. <laughs> and then we had like, you know, like six, seven hundred pound vintage synth, like from I don't know that like 70s yeah, 80s really and he never asked for it back we've had it ever since and it's been on like every every tune that we've <laughs> yeah, ever every done tour. <laughs> every tour <laughs> um so yeah don't tell my old boss about that um, <laughs> but yeah um so I think we've sort of come to an actual conclusion haven't we really oh did you, yeah, oh, yeah. you want to show the, some of the stuff in the project well I don't know yeah we could do it's just whether we want to dismantle the dismantle the record so we've got the <laughs> it's quite a question. yeah um one thing 
I thought um, one thing I thought might be nice actually is is kind of the ending of this tune because we're talking about the psych soul thing, and this uh, this record now that you've gone kind of flirts with both of those things almost in isolation. I think like the first half of it, I think, is like a soul front with a yeah. with a psych ending. In that, so I play sort of from the final chorus into the psych. You kind of get what I mean. Was your you had like a specific kind of thing for that guitar tone, wasn't it? I don't. I've just been uh, well. I've been listening to loads of Unknown Mortal Orchestra, and I've kind of I've kind of been kind of become a little bit obsessed with Ruben Nielsen's like guitar tones. And uh, I think that for that, well, I bought that fuzz octave pedal. Yeah. Um, and I think specifically in my mind, I knew we we talked about a guitar solo to the ending of that tune. Um, and just, I just had it in my head that that, that was the guitar tone that I needed. <laughs> I just like sat in my room and like played around with tones until I f- kind of found the right one. Um, yeah, fuzz octave, lots of phaser, chorus. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> <laughs> I had it my way, I'd have fuzz octave on everything. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I guess we can open up to some questions if anyone has any, or any if anyone wants to have any specific questions about in the project or about production and stuff like that, then we can go there as well. <clears throat> yeah, feel free to unmute if you want, or just put them in the chat if that's if that's easier. Mm-hmm. I've I've got one in the meantime <laughs> while people are thinking. If that's uh, if that's all right. We, well, actually, I've got like. Yeah, yeah, let's go with this one. I've got like three in my head at once. Um, <laughs> what I was going to ask was um, actually like a bit more on the like kind of, I guess, the business end of things. Um, like you were chatting earlier about the um, the video, the very yellow video <laughs> with the glitter and stuff. Um, and that's something that like struck me about about this whole project is like how strong the like visual identity for it is like I, I, so I'm interested to know like where that came from and how yeah how you went about doing that I guess like this, I read something about you dyeing all your clothes did I imagine yeah, yeah. we did that that was my idea <laughs> um uh, yeah, that's definitely an idiot question <laughs> I um I well yeah, like visual aesthetics has always, always been something that I thought about quite strongly because um, I studied art and I've always done art as well as music. Um, so, yeah, I guess just I've been sort of steering the visual aesthetic of the band um, with consultation of these guys. And um, yeah, I had the pleasure of directing that video, which is really fun. And it just literally came from. I just started dyeing some clothes with turmeric and it was like, this is cool. And they, you know, you can get a really bright, like vivid color from it. So it's like, what if we just dyed a load of clothes with turmeric and just did this whole turmeric shit show and just <laughs> <laughs> and shot a music video doing it. Um, and everyone was like, yeah, let's do it. And then I managed to borrow like a huge pan um, from the work that I was talking about um as a chef my old boss, the same boss <laughs> let me the fan um and we just dyed a load of clothes and it took forever to dye it all and like so much fabric 
But um, whole house is what... just smelled. <laughs> ten kilograms of turmeric we used in the end. But it was just so nice to have an idea and just like from the idea, just see it out. Um, and it'd be like, you know, pretty much what the idea was in my head. And for it to be, you know, we did the, al- the album shoot kind of first and, you know, we made the backdrops and the, the clothes. But then it's like, oh, wow, we can do, you know, the tour can look like this. Yeah. The videos can look like this. Everything had to be turmeric then. Like the whole tour was turmeric and like, you know, it was so easy because it's like you don't have to worry about what you're going to wear on stage. You know, you know what all going to look like. Yeah. Yeah, it was an idea. The idea, <laughs> the, the idea was for the cover art, wasn't it? First yeah, of all. yeah, it yeah. It's kind of because it's kind of picking up on those old sort of 60s and 70s records where just everything's like one colour. Yeah. And that's where the idea sort of came from. And we wanted it to be a photograph of us that was kind of a bit tongue in cheek and a bit jokey. So yeah we just kind of went with that and then we did the photo shoot and then we were like well let's just do a music video like this as well and it just snowballed and now it's become our like live aesthetic as well yeah yeah. (laughs) the problem is with when you dye your clothes with turmeric we like you have to really wash it out but it stays in all the pockets and like so like if you put your hand in your pocket it's game over basically (laughs) Like they so, for like the whole tour, we've all got these horrible yellow <laughs> fingers. There's a question. Yeah, go on, go for it. I was gonna, go, yeah, go for it. <laughs> question for you love chorus. <laughs> how do how you do, you do, do it? it, man? How many chorus pedals do we have? Too many. Too many. Like probably three each. <laughs> um, um, it's just experimenting with pedals and effects, really. Mm. Um, how I, how do you do it? You just turn the pedal on. What pedal? <laughs> <laughs> um, you've got all sorts. I've got constant. I always have constant chorus on my on my electric piano in the Nord, but almost it's actually um, I actually dial the chorus out because so with chorus, so you've got your unaffected sound, and then you've got another sound that's laid over the top. <laughs> And that's that's got sort of essentially vibrato on it. So when you put the, the two together, you get the chorus sound. But with this one, I just have the mix all the way fully wet. So I've only got basically so just turn it to to vibrato. So it's got, mm. got this really slow like sort of it's DJ almost like a DJ, yeah. Um, so it doesn't become a chorus then; it just becomes fully vibrato. So I just have that on. It's hard to know sometimes who's in tune and who's not because everyone's got so much detune <laughs> dialed in all over the place. It's just like, yeah. you know. <laughs> I, I found I was yeah, I'm actually out of tune. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like over time I've sort of become immune to it. Like, you know, when you're like, oh, I've got this new chorus pedal and you turn it on, I'm like, that sounds chorus, and you turn it off, and then you remind me that you already had two on to begin with. Yeah, <laughs> chorus. <laughs> um, yeah. Specific on the vocals of that bit we just played at the end, that was using that um that beatles effect automatic double tracking i mean i'm just using the plug-in version but it's like a tape effect where it sort of slowed down and sped up um behind the real uh behind the real vocal and that you end up with this kind of kind of woozy super wide um uh effect that you know is between flanging and 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 chorusing and, and double tracking the inspiration question is quite it's quite a tricky one because we all we all have quite broad um, tastes in music, um, so we kind of all bring our own kind of inspirations to it. What, what would you say is like our greatest inspiration for our music? Ah, uh, there, there's not one though, is there? Yeah, it's like lots. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I know. Well, at the time, like I was listening to a lot of stuff like Moses Sumney and Nick mm. Hakim, particularly for like the vocal stuff yeah so that when we got to having all these three parts seeing really high sort of falsetto mm. um that together i was just really into that sort of sound so we, we were doing a lot of that i mean all of our tunes particularly yeah. have bill, a lot of that mm. falsetto harmony bill so. does all the harmony arrangements we um, could, um, for our music we could have a harmony moment yeah the second verse of this yeah second just yeah, not, not a um, live one. <laughs> okay, just focus. Too slow, waiting for the right moment. I could have gone the other way. Was never gonna make you stay apart.
um yeah there's yeah so that's two each of jordan and and will uh and one of you i think in that double check um yeah natural chorus natural chorus there was a question a little bit further up from kai i don't know if you saw that one uh, yeah yeah yeah. cheers for two guys blah blah blah. yeah you read it (laughs) what was the most challenging song to record oh um the last one maybe yeah it's all in your head oh yeah that one has like a um like the last song on the album has like a a, a breakdown and then like it, it kind of builds back up and up and up to a big finale and getting that sort of curvature right where it came down enough but not too much and then and then grew in the right way it took a bit of honing didn't it yeah, right? yeah rehearsal because you know you know that it's you kind of got four or five kind of laps through the the chorus to build it but it's just like getting the elements in at the right mm. point like there's only a certain amount of time for like because we wanted it to start off just like so quiet like mm. so di- dynamically but but it, yeah just getting that arc was like really difficult mm. and like the bvs and stuff and then i i for the first time don't sing i'm doing like some spoken word stuff um which is fun and to get that and weave that in and make it work i don't know it was it was tricky but mm-hmm. it's kind of it paid off because it's my favorite moment on the on the album i think <laughs> i just remember i've got spoken where if any of you've got the uh the vinyl <laughs> well, no that. one's got the vinyl no yet. one's got the vinyl but if you do get the vinyl yeah. Doug, there's a bit of spoken word <laughs> from doug that. in the middle telling you to turn turn over the record and it's priceless so <laughs> <laughs> yeah vinyl only strictly um, vinyl there's another question if you could have any artists from rhythm section remix the album who would it be um Bell's trio or 3070 yeah that's good mm. what pedals mate <laughs> no, that was in a, I mean, that was you could do a whole us. patreon talk on <laughs> pedals if you want yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a new one at the bottom as well uh, what's, uh, what's the strangest sound? sound you've kept on a recording <laughs> um there's all sorts oh, of weird shit buried in there there's some birds outside your window uh, that's not strange, that's not that's strange. yeah there's birds in your house oh there's um, um there's my cat noise in um <laughs> I make a cat noise with kind of like it sounds like two cats like having a fight um on um morning dew. Like, it kind of just sounds like <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Uh, yeah yeah the outro of morning dew with you is a, has song. lots of odd things in there little like kind of nuggets oh so. yeah oh and there's some sneaky trombone on the album that we we snuck on there that's yeah. not weird but it's a little easter egg there's definitely a moment where I think you've left in someone talk, saying something, and whenever I'm listening to it in headphones, I keep thinking someone's trying to like, <laughs> talk to me, and I keep turning my headphones on. Like, I know this always happens. I think it's at the end of all in your head. There's a bit at the very end. Ah, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's just like some bleed on the the drum overheads or something. I'm the reason in. the reason we put bird song on um, the tune baby back is because. Um, a year ago, we we decided to do like a version of that really early in the morning sunrise in our garden, um, <clears throat> and it was December, so the sun was rising like early. So we got up at like five and um, set up, and then we started. We were trying to play so quietly, but we still woke a neighbour up, and <laughs> um, she told us to shut up. Anyway, we ended up we got one take, and it was a good take, and we packed down. But those the birds started to sing it as we were doing it, um, and it just sounded so beautiful that we were like, "Well, let's just actually put them on the on the album mm. version as well." So there you go. Worst guitar effect. Yeah, it's probably the last one, I reckon. What's your chorus nemesis? A worst guitar effect. Or like the anti-chorus. Um, I don't know. Like any any oh, like know. any thing is you can go too like, far. Like, like guitar yeah. effects of. Like, on, on art that we've used yeah or... thing is we always use chorus but we never use flanger yeah, I was gonna say and, flanger. They're, and they're so yeah. similar you know you, it, there's a limit isn't it it's like i reckon it flanger could be used tastefully <laughs> yeah i mean of course I, yeah I, I think there's a time and a place for any 
any <laughs> pedal if if you use it in the right context with the right intention <laughs> um but there are some stupid pedals out there that's mm. for sure um what's Have you seen they've, they've just released a, uh, a karen one you know like the <laughs> you seen that and it it's uh, <laughs> really funny um uh, it's like oh i'll have to i would say ages but, uh, we can look it up yeah we can it's... look at it right? just has a knob that says magic <laughs> oh yeah that's my <laughs> rainbow machine um what was that i'm sure you sent me a pedal the other day that was just like heart noises or something. oh yeah there was one that was that so uh, there you yeah. go <laughs> <laughs> um, one that does like a like a an anime like singing voice yeah that oh, that's yeah. the miku, miku stomp. stomp m-i-k it's uh it's quite remarkable yeah uh, it's, like, there's some really um... it's remarkable that we haven't bought one yet <laughs> yeah, yeah that's <laughs> it because <laughs> <laughs> you've had it for about four years there's some really um tasteless like that uh... one is god tier <laughs> 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 Oh, we have to get one now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We should end on Miku Stomp, I think. <laughs> yeah, on top it. That's yeah, awesome. Thank you so much, guys. That was brilliant. That was no so like, Thank you for having us. So interesting and wide ranging and fun and yeah, lo even even loads of little useful like tips and bits and pieces. Really awesome. Thank you so much. And thanks to everyone for watching. Um, we've got another workshop on Thursday this week, actually, with um, the brilliant Amelia, who works for Rhythm Section and Brainchild, uh, chatting about getting the most out of Instagram and building your brand and visual identity including dyeing all your clothes yellow on Instagram. Um, so that's at the same time on Thursday. Um, and the link will be on social media in the same place. So yeah, thank you so much, Cousin Cooler. That was awesome. No worries. No worries. Thank you. Thank you. Peace. Cheers. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>